So welcome everyone. We're looking at the developer interviews with Shogunate Tom. So that's myself. It's at Mushroom Fleet on Twitter. I'm joined by Daryl Castone. Did I get your name right? Yep. <laughs> You're very professional there. And um, uh, basically what I'd like to do is just bring us onto this developer interview question number one, which I've already answered. So it's redundant. Uh, who are you? Uh, yeah, well, I'm Daryl Castone. Uh, I am the founder um, and creative director um, for 14 Digital Arts. And uh, I am the mind behind our game, Legends of Neslithia. And what is the project name? See, these questions are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's Legends of Neslithia. Uh, when I was little, it was actually flipped the other way around. It was Neslithian legend, but... Uh, yeah, it's uh, these days, uh, and you know, for the foreseeable permanent future, we are definitely uh, referring to it as Legends of Neslithia. So, when did you start working on Legends of Nes Neslithia? <laughs> I didn't try and get that right as we go through. I know it's such a Neslithia. crazy. Neslithia. There we go. Um, technically, when I was in the seventh grade, um, you know, it's when I created it as a child. That's when I. Uh, started really working on it, uh, just hammering out what it is and the, the world and everything that it is. But professionally, uh, since about March of 2014 is when we started developing it. All right. So just over two years. Just yeah. That. So whereabouts are you based? Uh, we're in the United States. Um, we're near Atlanta, Georgia. Our city is uh, Roswell. Very nice town. I uh, kind of grew up here a little bit. I bounced around a lot, but yeah. And why did you choose to make this type of game? Um, I don't know. I, I was inspired by a couple things. Um, you know, a couple really cool games. Um, you know, I played them over and over throughout the years. And uh, when I was really trying to hammer out, you know, if I were to make Neslithia professionally, uh, what would I want to do with it? You know, uh, what would I want it to deliver to gamers? And I didn't want to do anything that was kind of run of the mill because while it's easy to follow a... Uh, a beaten path it's uh definitely cool and fun to try to do something different um and you know the few games that we were really into we thought that if you take elements of each one and you add something new to you know that mix that you can make something unique and who else is in your team or supporting your efforts uh beside myself i do have a co-designer um adam carlin uh our leading illustrator handles a lot of our um Promotional art, uh, character illustrations, environmental art, things like that. Uh, his name's Carnero. Um, he's from uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, we do have a duo of writers, um, Trey being one of them. Um, and then I did have a former partner that I started this with, uh, one of my best friends, Foss. Yeah. Uh, he's a game engineer, um, but we lost him uh, to another company. Oh. Uh, he's a former partner. And uh, like I said uh, to you recently, there's uh, quite a few people that we've been interviewing to bring on to expand our core team. So, uh, you know, this answer uh, might be quite different in another two weeks. So what is the background story to your game? Uh, the background story to our game? Um, hmm. That is a loaded question. Um, the overall theme of the world that exists in this game, it's... Uh, it's loaded. It's really complex. I mean, when I was a kid, uh, it was all about an adventure. You know, that's the whole yeah. reason of RPG games, the, the sense of adventure you get with it. You know, always discovering something new. Um, you know, when I got a little older growing up, uh, it was a little more centered around, you know, just life and, you know, the value of it. Um, and, of course, here we are more than a decade later, and, you know, uh, I'm in my you know later 20s. I've lived and had a lot of experiences and things like that, so... Um, you know, I've kind of grown up right alongside uh, this, you know, this world and uh, coming back to, you know, bring it to life once more. Um, I really started realizing a common theme that exists within the world. Um, and it was kind of like a, a fighting on, you know, uh, that's what we consider the theme, you know, for this world is fighting on. It's for peace, you know, um, you know, peace found through love, through life, you know, through redemption. Uh, every character is fighting on for something in this game, whether or not they're even a main character. But, uh, um, the, you know, the most of the game is told through our main protagonist, a uh, character I created as a kid named Phoenix. Yep. Uh, and uh, he's a great character, you know. Uh, he's achieved a lot, and he's got a lot of personal defeats. And, uh, you know, he lives in this great, big, beautiful world. And, uh, you know, you get to see he and his comrades, they kind of 
they fight on through a civil war, you know, and then they wind up in the beginnings of an even bigger war, bigger than, you know, all of them. Um, you know, he carries his own struggles, you know, with his regrets, his loneliness and, you know, other uh, uncertainties in his life. Um, and, you know, the character himself, he has a really rich history, um, you know, before and throughout the story. And uh, I try not to get... Uh, I try not to reveal a little. I try not to reveal too much, but yeah. basic beginning of the game. Um, you know, this guy is loaded with the weight of you know his nation on his shoulders throughout the Civil War, and you know he's basically just trying to get by each day. Um, you know, because he's he's going through a lot of personal things. Um, but you know, he like the rest of the main characters. You know, they're pretty much set on a crash course with destiny. You know, but they still continue to struggle and fight on. You know, past a lot of things that they've all been through. Um, but, you know, despite all of that, uh, Phoenix, you know, he still manages to be surrounded by a lot of great comrades and, you know, with his life being a soldier, uh, with his life as a soldier, um, he actually manages to keep a level of comfort and peace, but, you know, it's a luxury that, you know, as the game begins, it, it's, uh, in constant danger of being taken away and destroyed. And, uh, that's something that, you know, our main, uh, protagonist, you know, deals with, it scares him and, um, it's one of those things that kind of keeps him, uh, buried under the many things that are, that he's already struggling with. Um, and there's a funny, you know, conundrum with, uh, that character, you know, um, he's already been through so much, you know, and, uh, there's some personal failures of his, you know, that he deals with. And, uh, so with him, it's like the more, the closer he comes to achieving happiness and, you know, love and all those things, uh, the more fearful and, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a vicious cycle, you know, yeah. uh, you know, longing for peace and happiness, you know, but, you know, the closer you achieve that, uh, the more distant and, uh, freaked out he gets, I guess. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a constant theme in the story of basically fighting on and there is a deeper message that's being told, uh, that I would like to basically leave for the player to discover for themselves because I, I feel like depending on the individual, uh, people will take something different from it. And I'm actually excited to see uh, the type of reception we do get from that. But, um, you know, they're all just fighting on to attain whatever that they need, whether it's salvation or, you know, love or peace. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, one of the things that's important to def definitely mention um, Being a, this is something that I created as a kid and it's evolved so much. Uh, you know, there's a lot of characters that are depicted as really cool and untouchable, yeah. you know, typical Superman. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, these guys are all human. You know, I feel like there's something to relate to in each of them, you know. Um, and not only them as people, but, you know, their struggles and what's going on in that particular world. Um, and I, I definitely hope that people who play it um, whatever that they're going through, I hope that they can take something personal from it. So, uh, it's, a, uh, I don't know. It's, I, I, it's, it's really, it's really interesting. <laughs> yeah. It's Definitely. a deep story. It's a, a yeah. really interesting. Yeah. I don't know. There's, there's so much going on and there's so much that's evolving, uh, throughout the gameplay and throughout the story. Um, there's so many ways or so many different things that people can take away from it, um, other than the main scenario that, you know, of course is playing out. So, uh, the, the whole point with the story is to get people to reflect and to think, you know, that, that, that really is the goal, you know, and we, it's our hope that no matter who's playing this game, no matter what their background is, that they can find a character or a situation that they instantly, uh, connect with. So... Amazing. Yeah. Definitely hope there's a child out there that's going to play this and kind of keep it with them forever. Cool. Yeah. So when do you plan to release the game? When do I plan to release the game? Uh, that's kind of to be determined. Uh, you know, we're just trying to finish up our beta right now, and that's why we've recently uh, started, you know, expanding our core team. Uh, so far, it's just been a handful of us, but, you know, to really do that... Um, you know, just looking for all the right people to help us do that. So that's uh, TBD for now. And where can we buy it when it's finished? 
Uh, that's another thing that's to be determined. Uh, right now, we're building it to run on PCs. Uh, we are building it uh, with a PlayStation 4 in mind. That is uh, the console that I would like to release on. Uh, mm -hmm. be releasing on consoles, that's extremely expensive. Um, yeah. So it's not guaranteed that you'll be able to do that. Uh, I did get a license through Sony, however, to uh, release on the uh, PlayStation uh, Portable uh, Vita. But, uh, Vita, but um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It that's that's so far down the road from now. You never really know. I mean, ideally, I want to release on everything. I want to release on PC, Steam. Yeah, I'd like to release on uh, the Xbox and the PlayStation. Um, and I know things are kind of changing with Nintendo's platform. So, you know, I'd like to do everything, but I am building it uh, with PlayStation Four in mind. Um, and then the next question is, why do you choose to release the game on this platform? And well, we've covered that. <laughs> so i mean if you want to expand on it but i think you already did you know uh, i mean if i could expand on it sure, I, I mentioned that i chose uh playstation you know to keep in mind um as far as uh, technical specs i grew up a playstation kid um even to this day there's a lot of great games on microsoft am i an xbox guy personally no and i guess i still have a bad taste in my mouth from the the very first console playing that thing was like the controller. It was like a loaf of bread to me. So I don't know. I've always held a stupid, ridiculous grudge against Xbox. Uh, yeah, I mean, it'd be, I'd be lying to say I've never, you know, played anything on it, but I'm definitely a Sony guy. If you got to pick one or the other, I'm definitely a Sony guy. So it's only natural that I want to release on that platform. And uh, who has inspired you in game development? Um, you mean like other people in the industry? Yeah. Uh, that Nintendo, uh, Midway Games, I think they're NetherRealm Studios now, uh, definitely Square Enix, and uh, surprisingly there's a newer company, um, I don't really know if they're indie or not, but they're called Big Win Games, yeah. um, recently played a huge role in influencing us and some major elements in this game. And what background are you from in real life? Um, well, ethnically, uh, I'm, you know, black African American, however, whatever you want to call that, um, and French, um, and Irish. I always forget that. But basically, uh, Creole, uh, African American, and French. Yeah. Um, I was born in the state of Maryland. I'm not sure how familiar you are with American states, but yeah, uh, I was born in Maryland. I grew up bouncing all over the country. Uh, I've spent a lot of time right here in Roswell, Georgia, um, South Boston, uh, L.A. Um, my co-designer, Adam, he's from Atlanta. Uh, as I mentioned before, Canero is from Brazil. Um, one of our writers is from Connecticut. The other one's from Atlanta. Um, you know, Foss is from Atlanta. So most of the people that have been involved with this are from the Atlanta region, uh, with the exception of myself and Canero and one of our writers. Definitely have a diverse team. So when did you first think of this project? Um, there's kind of two ways to answer that, because... Uh, if you look at Neslithia as a universe, uh, you know, with the lore and the characters and everything, that's something that I've kept with me for almost 20 years. I mean, I created that as a little kid. Um, as a high schooler, I tried to make a game using uh, some amateur software, uh, oh, wow. RPG. And yeah, and that was really fun. Um, but, you know, the current incarnation of it is being built on a Unity, uh, Unity engine. So, you know, professionally, that answer, you know, we first thought of it back in uh, March of 2014. But, uh, you know, that's the answer to the project question. But uh, when did I first think of Legends of Neslafia? Like 18 years ago, basically. So where is there more information on the game? Um, well, we are actually preparing to launch our developer's blog. Um, yep. I mean, uh, within a month or so. Um, and that hub for now can be found at uh, 14digitalarts.com. Um, and if you want to go to the page or the developer's blog for the game itself, uh, when it is launched, if you go to 14digitalarts.com and by 14, it's the Roman numeral XIV, um, you go there and there's a uh, top menu, go to games and go to Legends of Nislithia. Uh, if you were to visit that now, you'd see some pretty badass promo art, but <laughs> that's about it. Uh, when did you decide to make this type of game or yeah, why? And not just another zombie shooter like everyone else. <laughs> um, if, if I answered that very honestly, I like to be honest, uh, 
I personally don't give a damn about first person shooter games. I mean, I respect them and there's a lot of work that goes into them. Um, but I definitely don't want to bring another one into the world. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm trying to help bring BRPG back. I really feel like that genre kind of fell off for a while there. Um, it was mm. great the nineties and, you know, uh, it was even great through the uh, earlier half of the two thousands. But lately I feel like RPGs, they come out once in a blue moon and whether or not they're great, it's very hit or miss. Um, I don't know. Uh, but touching back on the first person thing. Uh, I mean, I like 007 golden eye. Um, and I did play Metro Pri Metroid Prime. That, that was more of a uh, circumstantial thing. I bought a GameCube in high school, and Zelda hadn't come out yet, uh, Wind Waker, so they right. gave me a free. That's how I ended up playing Metroid Prime, but uh, I don't know. Um, I didn't make another shooter, and uh, just that's not my genre. Um, but as far as why I decided to make this game, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if this would make any sense, but I just want to, I want to give to another kid out there what all the games that I enjoyed uh, growing up gave to me, you know, that sense, that sense of adventure, um, yeah. immersing yourself in a story. I mean, RPGs that I grew up playing introduced me to so many other things, you know, like my whole life, I've been a fan of rock and roll. That's always been my first genre of music, but uh, through listening through the soundtrack of some of the RPGs I played, introduced me to uh, so much more music and so many other different things um rpgs always tell a story and it's always a different world and you know when you develop and you craft these worlds and the characters it's all based on something in real life so you know rpgs is definitely one of those genres of games that can introduce you if you're paying attention to so many things in real life um and i want to give that to someone else you know yeah so that's that's why we chose an rpg what challenges have you overcome while working on Legends of Neslithia? Um, that's going to be a different answer for all of us. We've, we all come from different places. We all have been through different things since we started this. Uh, I had a seriously uh, rough patch in my personal life just a few months after uh, we, we began development on this. Um, so I had to focus on my own well-being for a minute there. Um, but even as I returned, I mean, I was emotionally drained and physically kind of pooped. So I don't really know how the hell I managed to get through it. Um, but he, I don't know, professionally, uh, we lost uh, our original game engineer, Foss, to Amazon. Yeah. Um, he and I are still best friends. We speak often, but uh, he just can't partner with us legally. You know, um, I guess Amazon is in the game market, you know, yeah. where they're their presence is and what impact they've made is beyond me, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're in the market. So, you know, they don't, they don't want him dealing with competition. Um, I don't really view them as competition, but whatever. Um, yeah. So, you know, us expanding, we're going to replace them fairly soon, you know, if we're lucky, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so for me professionally losing FOSS was a, uh, it was a big challenge when we started this, you know, I was the artist and I had the vision. I was the creative one, you know, uh, and he, he was the technically gifted one. You know, he was the programmer and uh, he also had a minor uh, in business. So he brought that to the table and basically everything he liked, I had everything I liked, he had, you know, so that, that first year, you know, uh, we knew each other's roles and we respected it. And we worked together so well. And then when he left, you know, uh, I learned a lot from him in that first year, but it's not quite, you know, the same as just being him. Um, yeah. So, left, you know, I, I question not if I could succeed or if I wanted to keep forward with it, but, you know, did I have the knowledge? You know, that's very important. And uh, it was a challenge. And, you know, I, I want to bring this Lithia to the world more than anything in my life right now. So, you know, I definitely stuck with it and said, fuck it. And uh, I kept with it. And honestly, over the last year and a half, uh, as much as I've grown uh, in a business sense and working with other people and, you know, the marketing and everything like that, uh, I'm definitely a different person right now in this moment than I was, you know, when he left. So uh, it made me stronger and uh, definitely made me a lot more valuable. So um, 
I don't know, maybe one day we'll be speaking in the future and some of the other team members can tell you their own challenges. Uh, yeah. I don't know what else. No one else has had any really crazy professional challenges. It's always, it's just all been personal. So. So, uh, yeah, uh, when, when did you start developing this game? Because we know when you had the idea, but when did you start developing? Uh, March of 2014, uh, we spent several months just hammering out what it would be, what it would entail visually and mechanically. And once we had a really good idea of what we did want, uh, there were so many fun nights where we would be on Skype because I was in the D.C. area and he was in Florida. Yeah. And uh, so many fun nights where we were on Skype and, you know, I was drawing things and designing things and passing them back and forth and coming up with ideas of, what would work, uh, what wouldn't work, what would be entertaining, what would people like. Um, you know, so there was a lot of nights of just us being on Skype and, you know, uh, me watching him work on Unity and us just kind of communicate back and forth until three, four o'clock in the morning every night. You know, um, oh, I, I definitely, I definitely miss those times. Those, you know, you, you could call it a honeymoon phase for when we started this because, you know, making indie games is serious business, you know, in my opinion. Uh, it's yeah. not easy. It's not always fun, of course, because, uh, you know, it is a job at the end of the day and uh, it's it's not always drawing and it's not always the fun parts there. You know, there are other elements to it. Um, but I definitely miss those days and I, I still have them. Uh, just It's different. Everything's more involved. Everything's more professional and a lot more serious it's not uh we definitely had a honeymoon phase with everything now and where have you worked previously um all of my personal experience um i've gained working alone and with other uh, designers uh you know before i was finished with school i that was then when i realized i didn't really have a desire to work for anyone else you know, when i was little i really wanted to work for square uh, i was definitely driven to do that but halfway through college i realized that it's not what I want. Uh, you know, it would be fun working for them or Nintendo or any other company, EA or Blizzard. But, you know, at the end of the day, I really wanted to bring my own vision to life. And I knew that that wasn't going to be easy going to some other corporation and, you know, doing that. So uh, luckily with, you know, my age and where I'm at in this era of gaming and development, uh, you know, there are tools out there to, bring your own vision to life if you really, really want to make that happen. So, mm. um, yeah, it's years ago, all the tools and resources, they just weren't available, but now they're abundant. So, you know, a little money, uh, a whole lot of time and a crazy amount of drive and you can do it. And that's what I'm doing. Beautiful. We're all doing. Why did the chicken cross the road? I'm going to stick this in there halfway through. <laughs> Uh, uh, it took its chances loading across the street by Taco Bell rather than Chick-fil-A. <laughs> That's great. I'm going to get some great answers for that one over the series, I think. So, <laughs> so back to the game. Who designs the artwork? Okay. Um, uh, there was a lot of original concepts done by myself. Yeah. Um, and we've developed, uh, as I've communicate, I communicate with my illustrator, uh, Canero, every single day. Um, all the final illustrations are done by him. That dude's a legend. He's awesome. Uh, he's become a really great friend of mine. Um, and moving forward, um, a lot more of our stuff. I'm basically throwing the reins in his hands. Um, he's definitely grown into, you know, the role of being our main illustrator. You know, uh, I, I trust him and his ability uh, immensely. So, uh, yeah, so far, everything that you will see, you know, it's Canero. He's the the badass behind it all. And why did you choose the name Neslithia? Um, I don't really remember where my mind was as a kid when I came up with that name. I have mm. no idea. But uh, a lot of people think that Neslithia is the world, you mm. know, or it's the person or something, and it's not. Um, it's actually a universe that this game takes place in. So, um, you know, this particular game is just going to be one of the many tales of legend that takes place within it. So uh, I plan for Neslithia, uh, sorry, Legends of Neslithia to be a franchise, to be an actual brand and yeah. you know, brand branching off of it in the future. You know, um, they're all separate stories. You know, they won't really have anything to do with each other. 
um, as far as uh, uh, numerical entries. But, uh, you know, the Slyphia is a universe. You know, Legends in the Slyphia, this being the first game, it's just one of the legends. <laughs> uh, who have you used for advertising and how effective have they been? Man, when I first had to touch on that, uh, that was kind of a beast. Uh, I see why people go to school for advertising and marketing. Um, but so far, uh, we've only recently launched our website and make ourselves known to the world. Um, we have mostly used social media to connect with other people, you know, similar to ourselves. And it's been a pretty awesome, really interesting, fun experience. Um, you know, we've been reached out, uh, you know, We've been reached out to by people like yourself and other like-minded folks. You know, they yeah. adore all the geeky, you know, awesome, nerdy stuff that we love so much. Um, and, you know, I didn't have my high uh, hopes for social media at first, but it's been a crazy success. Uh, it's actually, it's still growing pretty strong. Uh, you know, I know when we launched the website, we had to really think about what kind of an impact that we want our social media to have. And man, I set the bar pretty low. You know, we don't have that demo ready for people to get excited about. And, you know, um, mm. I'm not some ex Capcom employee that yeah. anyone's, you know, here with. So I had, I set the bar pretty low as far as expectations. And man, did we exceed it? That's an understatement to say that we did exceed it. Um, and it's been really, really, really good. I mean, I can't really, I can't wait to release more content. Uh, def you know, it's definitely in the Slithia Center content. Uh, because the amount of feedback um, and anticipation that we've received so far has been really great. And uh, I think once we really start slowly rolling out more of the world, uh, I can't wait for that. Well, what other projects have you been involved in? Huh. Um, well, everything else that I've done has been for fun. I mean, that's the fear. Um, Legend of Zofia is definitely the first uh, professional uh, funeral project that uh, I've done an undertaking with. Um, but if I had an opportunity to do so, there's a lot of uh, things that I did as a hobbyist many years ago that I would love to kind of bring to light and, and run with it. Um, and when I say given an opportunity, um, that would be because a lot of what I did for fun um, in the past was based on, you know, IPs that didn't belong to me. Um, I know that we were making a Batman Beyond game yeah. that we were designing to run on a PlayStation Port um, and Windows. Um, that was really fun. I uh, worked with an incredible artist, um, uh, Mark Vick. He's from Canada. Um, I forget which city, but uh, yeah, uh, made a pretty badass uh, 3D Batman model that a lot of people were excited about. Um, but, you know, I'm not Warner Brothers and I don't own Batman Beyond's likeness. And, Back then, I was in a studio. I was more so, uh, you know, growing artist, and Boss was definitely still learning his crap. So right. there was no way in heck that we were going to get those rights. But uh, some other projects that we worked on, um, it was like a classic arcade retelling of the WCW Invasion story. And I don't, uh, I don't know how old you are or if, you're, if you uh, recognize the term I, WCW. But... Yeah, yeah, just about. It's not, it's not pandas. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not pandas. Um, yeah, being here in Roswell when I was growing up and I was little, uh, there was a wrestling company called WCW. They were huge. And uh, I was a big fan of it as a kid. And by the time I was a freshman in high school, it went away. Some legal things that happened, they're no longer around. Um, but there was a cool invasion thing. I guess the company was absorbed by another wrestling company. Uh, yeah. I think they're currently known as WCW. And they did like this invasion story where you had all these superstars from one company that basically uh, were squaring off for the first time ever against these other superstars from this, co from this rival company. And in real life, the way it all worked out, uh, because of contract disputes and lack of uh, big name talent, the invasion story was very, very weak. And it, it really didn't work as well as the uh, most hardcore and even casual fans uh, would have hoped that it did. Um, so for fun, I wrote down several months, I think like a whole year, of Monday night storylines and pay-per-views and things like that. This is all language that you don't understand if you've never watched wrestling, but uh, it was really fun. It was really fun. And I was really amped to uh, make this wrestling game. And uh, I think even as recently as two and a half years ago, I was still toying around with the idea of possibly just saying the hell with it and, you know, de developing a demo just to see what, what you know, happened. But uh, you never know. that's definitely another, 
yeah, it's definitely one thing, you know, in the future, if I could be at the helm of a Batman Beyond game, and uh, if I could definitely uh, do a retelling of this WCW invasion, that would be pretty dope. <laughs> when do you plan to expand your team? You know, um, we're already in the process of, you know, seeking out those core additions. Um, you know, once we achieve that, you know, we, it's an understatement to say that we'd be eager and ready to get things rolling, you know, even more so. And when do you actually work on your game in your, in your time? What time do you know? Um, the days, yeah, the days that I'm not working on my day job, I'm working from home. You know, I usually have two consecutive days week um and you know that's when me and the other design partners we all get together we catch each other up on what we've done that week and we work together um but you know the days that i do work uh have to be up by nine to be to work by 10 and are there as late as there as late as you know nine or 10 p.m so you're talking about you know 12 day 12 hour days on average and then i come home you know, I get up by tea, I catch up with my brother or my dad, and then I'm up until 4 a.m. working, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, when I actually did your questionnaire, it was like 3, a little past 3 o'clock in the morning when I did that. And I had to work at 10 o'clock the next morning, so, you know, I sacrificed a lot of sleep, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's how games get made. <laughs> yeah, right. That's how, dreams get, that's how dreams are achieved. What are you playing right now? Um, you know, with with my work hours and my development hours, I spend about 42 hours a week at work and probably another 36 uh, on top of that. And that's that's been an every week thing for about a year and a half now. Um, but, I mean, so with that said, I'm not playing a ton of games. Mm-hmm. Um, lately, I could barely call myself a gamer. Other than you know the fact that I'm you know making one, uh, I have an iPad and uh, I have been kind of like replaying the remake of uh, Final Fantasy Adventure. I think it's called Adventures of Mana. Uh, when I heard that they were remaking that, I thought, oh wow, that's really cool. That was a cool game, and uh, yeah, I went ahead and bought that, and I've been playing that uh, tiny bit by tiny bit every couple of days. There's nothing that I'm really like hardcore. And uh, I believe that in Adam's uh, spare time, um, if he's not working on everything, I think he's uh, still pretty hyped about a Pokemon tournament. So uh, once in a blue moon, we have a place around here in Atlanta called Battle and Brew. It's a really cool bar and restaurant. It's a video game cafe. Oh, wow. It's a really great place. And the the people who work there and run it, they're pretty awesome. And uh, there are certain days where if we achieve a lot through the week and we just need a reset, we re, uh, need to reset, which is super important because this stuff does get stressful. Uh, you know, we all get together and we meet up there and, you know, grab a couch and a table. We usually pop on the Wii and we just play some classics. You know, I am untouchable in Mortal Kombat too. Uh, <laughs> can't really say, <laughs> I can't really say that for Mortal Kombat 10. That's more of an even match. Um, but yeah, we definitely like to get together and blow off some steam there. It's all about the classics. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I, I I stick with the the uh, the franchises uh, with longevity. You know, I stick with the franchises I grew up with. So. So, what inspired you to make Nestlefia? This would be uh... Uh, JRPGs and. Yeah, uh, JRPGs in general, but uh, more specifically, there was a mini game in Final Fantasy VII. It was a Fort Condor mini game. Um, that was the basis of what Neslifia is from a gameplay standpoint. Um, we're definitely inspired by Final Fantasy Tactics. Um, and there's a lot of indie games coming out recently uh, that are inspired by Tactics, and surprisingly enough, they're all quite different. So you know, um, I hope people get as excited about our game, um, Zelda. And, you know, elements of just, you know, traditional American sports free agency concepts. So I know none of those things are super similar. So, you know, it's definitely been fun finding common ground between them all and making something unique. What engine are you using? Uh, Unity 3D is what we're using. uh, Unity 5. And where will you be promoting the game? 
uh, when we're even ready to consider such a thing, uh, you will be the first to know. Uh, I'm definitely interested in going to some conventions and things like that. But, you know, a lot of that takes money um, and expense, you know, just getting away from your life to do those things. Uh, that's not really what we've talked about too much. We're just, like I said, we're trying to hammer out this beta. And if you ask me at this stage, uh, we don't have anything. Uh, we don't have anything uh solid enough in my own opinion uh worth promoting yet you know uh, there's a blueprint and we're we're still building so cool well but uh with oh, that said you know everything's yep. going to be through the website our developers blog is where you're going to be able to see uh all bits of creations you know milestone by milestone anything that we feel is a major achievement you know we're just going to throw out there for everyone to be able to follow it so so uh, obviously, guys, we're going to have all of the links in the description. So uh, yeah, thanks for uh, following along the interview. Um, obviously, we'll be coming back, hopefully, to check out the uh, progress. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks ever so much for joining and uh, being a part of this interview. So Yeah, it was really fun. Thank you for giving me that opportunity. That's no worries. And uh, thanks, everyone out there for watching and listening. Um, be sure to check out the uh, follow-ups and yeah, thanks again.